What is up guys? Welcome to episode 7 of the Grand Marquis build. Seven. Today we are at Lowe's because we need to get some stuff. Today's episode is going to be all about wiring and making sure our separate individual systems all work. So what we're doing is uh, we're wiring up all our fans today. Yep. We are wiring up and plumbing up our oil system for the turbo as well as relocating our battery to the trunk. So this episode should be fun. Alright, we just got back from Lowe's and here's all the wiring stuff. We got four fuses. Each fuse is going to have two fans running to it. So that's two fans, two fans, oil pump, oil pump. And we also got four switches here, uh, 100 feet of 14 gauge wire, just everything that we need for wiring mm -hmm. and, uh, shrink tube and shrink tube, yeah, basically. So this is all the stuff we're gonna have for all the fans and stuff. So what we're doing for the oil system is, you know, completely out there. We wanted to do something a little bit different. We know uh, Motion Auto, he's gonna be doing a rear mount turbo setup. So he's gonna be using an oil scavenge pump. Um, the original idea when we first bought the car was that we were going to make a completely self-contained oil system. So when we bought the car, what I did was I went ahead and ordered two oil scavenge pumps because what we're going to be doing is it's pretty simple when you think about it. We have this oil reservoir here. We're going to be pumping oil into the turbo at about 35 PSI. And um, we're also going to be pumping oil out of the turbo back into the tank so that it doesn't you know, get all nasty inside the turbo and start smoking out the exhaust like the protege did. Um, and we have this oil cooler here, which is all going to be in a self-contained oil loop so that we do not have to touch the engine. Um, the, the turbo oil itself, like I said, is going in this right here and it's going to be a completely separate oil system from the engine of the vehicle. So, you know, it's going to be pumped out of here. It's going to go through a pump, it's going to go through the cooler, it's going to hit the turbo, and then it's going to be pumped back into the tank. So that's the general idea with our oil system here. So this is what we're doing for radiator fans here. We got these nice, ricey, blue eBay radiator fans here, and pretty much they come with these really bootleg eBay zip tie springy mount thingies, which actually work pretty good, and I'm just attaching them to our Megan radiator right now so that I can wire them up. Dude, there's tools back here. 14. Alright, so the trunk is all emptied out. All the CSBS is gone. We're just gonna throw in the battery here, a little tie down and whatnot. And, like, drill a hole in the back end and run the cable we bought. test fit it really quick I got the correct angle here so when I put it on this uh, this bar going down to the frame rail it sits perfectly flat and then this distribution box is just gonna sit right up on top of there and there's three bolts in there we're gonna drill out one two three and then we'll be met the plate is all done angles perfect holes are perfect fits on perfectly I'm gonna bolt it on and then tack it where I want it take it off and finalize the welds but that's basically what it's gonna look like right there so it's starting to look really good this whole build is legit as fuck it's kind of scaring me while Cam is working on the distribution box mount, I have officially started to wire the fans and Dylan is um, relocating the battery to the trunk and, you know, kind of routing the main cable down to the rear. So all is going very well. The gooch. Bam. Look at that. So much fucking air, dude. I got all the uh, splices all heat wrapped or shrink tube, whatever you want to call them. So it's pretty legit. It's one of my most legit wiring jobs so far. I remember uh, I've done a few legit. shoddy wiring jobs in my day, but the S14 you know, was the worst. The S14 was such a hackery, but hey, it worked. It did work. I got the you know schematics all drawn out, whatever the hell you want to call them, and um, we're gonna be running a fuse block on the inside. It's just gonna be really legit. I'm actually really looking forward to wiring this legitly. So very, very, very good. So Dylan just finished uh, running the positive back to the trunk. 
Orion had a really, really good idea because I, I wanted to tap the chassis and then just take this ground and we had a bolt just laying around and tap it to this bolt thread. But he had a good idea just to take a tab off the chassis, drill a hole in it, and it worked out a lot better than I expected. And then we have two more small grounds right here we just got to self tap. But that looks so good. Like this right here looks so legit. Really good job making this the yeah, distribution box you. mount. And then this fucking good idea, but even better execution. Yeah. All right, we just took a quick trip to Advanced Auto to get a little bit more stuff for the build here. We got all of our oil hosing. Yes, we went and we got some real hose that is designed for oil. And uh, I needed a fuse block and some fittings, our uh, connectors to wire up everything because we're going to be doing one. 12 volt source into the car and then from there it's gonna hit this and we're gonna be able to hit all of our individual components so let's get into it so in addition to all the electrical connectors we also got all the brass fittings we needed for our oil reservoir uh this one we have three inlets on this so one is capped off this is oil feed this is oil return and uh basically this goes like that this one's already teflon on this one's teflon on but we're not going to touch this yet because this barb is not the same size as the oil uh, return, so we're gonna have to do some janky stuff to that. Uh, I don't know if we're gonna go back and see if we can get a bigger one or wrap tape around it, but nonetheless, we got all the fittings. Here's the start of the switch panel. I just got the first switch in there nice. Uh, we were having troubles with the drill press, the drill, uh, the drill bit kept falling out, but I got the, the three more marked and all I have to do is drill them. And uh, honestly, dude, it looks a lot better than I anticipated. Oh yeah. Um, this here, this is going to be a battery tie down. It's for like the width of the front of the battery be a top brace over the top and it's gonna like hug it into the wall like into the side of the car and then also one going down so it doesn't go up or down or this way or sideways like that so I'm just like covering all the bases for this situation no matter what might happen Oh, that works. That works just fine, actually. All right, so right now, uh, me and Cam are making the mounts to hold our auxiliary oil system tank. Um, pretty much all we're doing is we're just making brackets that are gonna weld to the tube frame here and just suspend this right there, right in this position. So, should be good. It smells good. Feels like I'm getting fucking shots. You are gooch, my friend. Doctor. You are absolutely gooch. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and just weld the top of this now. I don't even know. All right, so here is the oil reservoir fully, fully mounted. All the brackets are finalized. And it looks really, really good where it is. I like the placement of it. I like the uh, the idea of having a oil system completely separate of the actual engine. But like I said, the brackets are fully custom. They look really good. And I'm just excited to see where this building is going to go because it's turning out so fucking legit. Yeah. So before we head to the shop today, had to stop at our favorite metal place, the Logan Bargain Barn, to pick up some more flat stock. We go through this like absolutely nothing. We got three sections, 20 feet long, and we had them cut them down to like, yeah. I don't know, was it 10, ten sections, sections yeah. now? So we have, we have a, a shit ton for uh, our oil pump and a lot of tabs. So let's head to the shop and do custom fab. Actually, head to Hocon, Hocon the gas. gas. We need gas. We need welding gas. Oh. Here's the new bottle. So apparently they don't fill it here. They just swap the bottle out. There's the old bottle. Here's a new bottle. We were like, damn, you already filled it that fast, but just a new bottle. So now we have a full tank we can weld. Alright, so Cam just finished up the bracket for the return oil pump and Dylan just finished up his brackets for the oil cooler here and uh, it's gonna go somewhere in this region like that and then another a fan's gonna slide into here to be cooling the oil cooler and uh, while they're doing that I'm just waiting for them to finish pretty much so that I can take over and wire this whole nightmare up so Do you need it staggered? Uh, no but 
it won't. There's a there's a heat shield for the turbo in the way right there. Okay, so we're just gonna go with yeah. All right, so right now I am starting the wiring for the oil pump. Cam just got the return oil pump mounted, and I'm going to wire it up. So let's get on with the show. All right, so I got a few things wired up. I got the fan, the radiator fans wired. I got our secondary oil pump wired. Um, I got a battery on the back now. I'm going to give my wiring an official test real quick. So here's our fan switch. Oh yeah, listen to those, listen to those eBay fans. Ready for the oil pump? Yep, I'm ready. Made in test on the oil pump. Three, two, one. We're good. Woo! 35 PSI on that oil pump, which is exactly what we need. We also mm -hmm. have an oil restrictor for the turbo that is also 35 PSI, so also, that we're not pumping also, too much oil into it. Before they comment that these pumps are safe to be pumped dry, yeah. and we tested it really short, so it's safe. Like a, Our like oil cooler for the turbo the is now mounted. Uh, Dylan just made a bracket for the fan because the fan is a little bit bigger than the cooler. So bracket on this side and then these weird zip tie fan holder thingies on this side. So all is going well still. All right. I need to grab some more hose clamps, but I have one line for the power steering cooler ran all clamped down, just barbed off right here. Got to do the same for the other. It's nice because uh, Dylan just mounted it right in front of the radiator, so it's just basically just a straight shot for both of them. So I'm going to get some hose clamps. All right, let me walk you through all the coolers we have on this car. We have our Megan racing radiator, first of all, obviously cooling the engine coolant. We have this power steering cooler right here. It's just a regular trans saver cooler. Uh, we have this oil cooler right here, which is cooling the oil for the turbo. Lastly, we have our haggard mounted tranny cooler. So Dylan went ahead and got the second oil pump all mounted. It's oriented the, orientated the right uh, position. I got the second fitting on the oil cooler. So I got the line already cut. I'm gonna go ahead and get, oh, that was hot. Get this all connected. Just like that. That's gonna take me eight years to fucking get this to the side. <laughs> oh, that doesn't sound good. Did it, did it run out? No, I don't know what that was. I think the fucking... Sounded like the fan wasn't spinning. Oh yeah. Hot. We got everything set up. Me and Cam just triple checked. Every hose, every clamp, everything. And we think that it's about time to start this up for the first time with all of our goodies installed. So this should be interesting. Got that good old super tech right, for everything. I'm gonna, I'm gonna start it. Wait, wait, wait. <laughs> Let me get some more cool in here. Turn the fan on. for our second startup here. You got, the guy starting it's got a job because got all, all the of switches. these need to be start flipped like the second it starts running. Like that.
I can't, I can't describe it any other way. Look at this, guys. We did this. We All built this. this. Fully custom. The whole Everything plan. is custom. We got an independent oil system with a turbo. We got a fucking 4G63 radiator. It's coming out so good. It came out so good, actually. It's good. It's here. It's We're not even it. done yet. We're not done yet. Episode 8 is going to be even crazier. I can't even wait. There's so much airflow. I feel it from here. So yeah, when these turn on, I got cold standing over there. It's never gonna overheat ever. I'm gonna go live on my Instagram right now. There you have it guys. All this custom fab for the past two or three weeks has finally paid off. We have finally started this beast. We got Actually, it took, it took like four or five days to get everything all plumbed. Yeah. All the fans wired, all the mm -hmm. coolers all plumbed, the uh, independent oil system for the turbos all plumbed. Yeah. It idles good, runs good, shoots flames, sounds really good, so I'm just, I'm so stoked on the way it came out. And this is what happens when you take your time, so. Definitely stay tuned for episode eight because we're gonna make it run even better. Uh -huh.